we're going to be looking at capacitors in series and in parallel. If we first consider two capacitors, C1 and C2, connected in series, and in series, C1 will have a voltage V1 across it, and C2 will have a voltage V2 across it. Now, if we were to combine these two capacitors, we would get an equivalent capacitor of C, which would have a voltage V across it. So looking at the charge stored on our two capacitors, we'd say it's the same charge Q. And that's because, if you remember, current is the same in series and current is the rate of flow of charge. So if you have the same current in series, then the rate of flow of charge in series, it will be the same. So that means the same charge will be stored on series capacitors. Voltage in series is divided or shared between the components. So what we can say is our total voltage V is equal to V1 plus V2. So we're going to use this equation for capacitors, Q equals CV, and we're going to change this equation so it's now in terms of charge and capacitance. So the voltage V will be equal to Q divided by C. V1 will equal charge Q divided by C1. And V2 will equal Q divided by C2. The Qs cancel out as they're common throughout. So that will leave us with 1 over C, where C is our total capacitance, is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. And what this means is by connecting capacitors in series, the overall capacitance decreases. That means the capacitors will store less charge. If we now connect the two capacitors in parallel, so that now they will have voltage V across them, but C1 will store charge Q1 and capacitor C2 will store charge Q2. So we're going to try and get an equivalent capacitance for these two, which is C and we'll have a voltage V across it and storing charge Q. In parallel, the charge stored on the capacitors will be shared or divided, and that's because the current in parallel is shared or divided, split between the components. So what we can say is then the total charge Q stored on our combined capacitor is equal to Q1, the charge stored in C1, plus Q2, the charge stored in C2. In parallel, voltage is the same, so they're both going to have the same voltage V. We're now going to use the equation for capacitance, Q equals CV, and we're going to change this equation of charge so that it's now in terms of capacitance and voltage. So Q will equal C times V. Q1 will equal C1 times V. And Q2 will equal C2 times V. So it becomes this. We can cancel out the voltage because it's common throughout. So that means our total capacitance is equal to the sum of C1 and C2. So in parallel, the overall capacitance increases. So that means more charge is going to be stored overall. And if you remember from AS, where we have resistors connected in series and connected in parallel, we are doing the opposite to find the total resistance. 
So if you remember connecting C resistors in series, we add the overall resistances. And if we connect resistors in parallel, we add the reciprocals of the resistances. So we're doing the opposite. And that's uh, something to remember. Capacitors in series is like resistors in parallel and capacitors in parallel is like resistors in series.